meteorologist Brian Peters with your weather extreme video for Wednesday, June the 22nd. And summer just keeps rolling on. Satellite image over the southeastern U.S. this morning features a few clouds across parts of central Alabama. But for the most part, most everybody waking up with plenty of sunshine. On the surface map, we're still under high pressure over the southeastern U.S. It's helping to keep the front to our north. Looks like it's going to be a very active day in the Midwest, especially in the vicinity of Chicago. We'll talk about that in a moment. On the upper air chart at 500 millibars, roughly about 20,000 feet, we are seeing that ridge, that heat ridge that's been over the southwestern U.S., beginning to nose its way across the lower Mississippi River Valley and into the southeastern U.S., and hence the temperatures are just going up across the southeastern U.S. This morning, temperatures varied a good deal, 77 at Birmingham, so it didn't cool off much, 70 at Tuscaloosa and 70 at Anniston. So most uh, most spots dipping back to around the 70-degree mark, maybe a few places getting into the upper 60s. Watch warning map is still relatively quiet. We do have... Uh, the excessive heat um, advisories over the southwestern part of the United States. There's some uh, excessive heat in the, uh, or heat advisories anyway, in the central plains. And also those green areas you see are flashed flood watches uh, in, in anticipation for some heavy rain that's possible today. And uh, again, we'll get to that in just a moment. QPF uh, quantitative precipitation forecast featuring a good deal of rain along the front that's going to be sagging down into the and through the Ohio River Valley uh, as a storm system moves that way. But uh, for us, it looks like our best chances for rain are probably going to come in the, well, let's say Monday, Tuesday time frame, maybe picking up a little bit on Sunday. And let's get to that severe weather outlook. The moderate risk for severe storms now extends from southern Minnesota across the Chicago area and across the northern uh, Indiana into western Ohio into the vicinity of Cincinnati. And a little bit closer look at that as we look at the specific uh, cities in Indiana and then also the specific cities in uh, Illinois. And again, affecting a big population center in the terms of Chicago. All modes of severe weather are possible. Uh, isolated tornadoes, damaging wind, as well as large hail, and that may change as the uh, system evolves, and uh, we may end up with a, a long-lived thunderstorm complex or a derecho event uh, later uh, this afternoon and tonight. Day two, the slight risk area extends over into the mid-Atlantic states from eastern Kentucky across West Virginia and uh, into the mid-Atlantic states. And then on day three, we have two, uh, the old one, the old frontal boundary sagging into the Carolinas with some uh, slight risk area around uh, South Carolina and the coastal sections of North Carolina, and then another one centered primarily on North Dakota. And the tropics, they're remaining quiet. Thank goodness. All right, the 060 GFS model run. There's the upper air chart, and there's the 594 contour bulging across the southeastern U.S., 594 uh, heights. Uh, going all the way almost from coast to coast across the southern tier of the United States. In the meantime, the ridge bulging up and keeping the main westerlies well to our north. And, uh, of course, we've got this uh, low-pressure system over Iowa that is going to be responsible for a good deal of severe weather across the mid uh, Midwest area. And there's a look at Cape values, and those Cape values are getting up there. The GFS suggesting values could be uh, well up into and beyond the 5,000 joules per kilogram level. So a good deal of energy for those thunderstorms to deal with. By Thursday, uh, the, the ridge is still the big thing in our uh, weather pattern, extending from just off the Florida coast all the way back over into Arizona. Uh, and that system is moving on, as you can see, up in uh, southeastern Canada. And again, that drags the front across the uh, and takes the, the surface low across the uh, mid-Atlantic states where the uh, risk for severe storms is. Friday, the front will drag down close, but I'm not sure it's going to really get all the way here as the ridge begins to bulge upward into the Great Lakes area on Saturday. This is Friday, and uh, that front comes down, so we've got isolated in as a possibility on Friday, isolated thunderstorms. The uh, Saturday picture shows that ridge bulging up into the Great Lakes, 
So Saturday is probably going to be one of our hottest days as we see highs get into the upper 90s, and that means heat indices could be into the 105 to 110 range, which is into the dangerous uh, range. But also keep in mind that we have this very strong closed low coming into North Dakota, and that is going to be helping us in, in time. And again, uh, the, we still have the front kind of in our area, so Saturday looks like uh, possibly from – maybe uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms. That big closed low coming across the North Dakota area gets to the western Great Lakes by Sunday, and the ridge is still in place over the southeastern U.S., so Sunday could also be a very hot day, but we still see the possibility of some uh, scattered showers in the area. Changes begin to occur on Monday as that strong uh, closed low moves across the southeastern Canada, and that drags the front down into our area. So it looks like Monday could be one of our better chances for seeing some precipitation in the area. And by Tuesday, that uh, trough moving across the eastern Great Lakes, beating back that ridge and, and pushing it back into the southwestern United States. Don't wish anything bad on those folks over there, but it's going to be nice by Tuesday. Uh, we should see a break in the heat actually by Monday and Tuesday with more showers and uh, more clouds uh, in the area. Uh, we should be seeing a uh, drop in the heat. And then by the time you get out to Wednesday, we have basically a bit of a trough over the eastern half of the country. But notice the little short wave that's uh, in southeastern uh, Kansas. Uh, We've got to be kind of vigilant with this northwesterly flow pattern. We could see very large thunderstorm complexes develop in the plain states and actually move a long distance and end up impacting us well down into Alabama. Going out into voodoo country, the GFS is uh, continuing to stay um, on a steady course with a bit of a trough over the eastern half of the country, and that's good because that keeps the extreme heat away from us. By the time we reach the 3rd of July, remember we did have this uh, very strong closed low over the lower Mississippi River Valley in the vicinity of Arkansas. Now it's uh, a probably going to be a closed low but a weak one, and that looks pretty uh, reasonable actually, and that could give us a, um, more enhanced uh, showers and more numerous showers. And then by the time we get out to July 6th, we still get this little weakness that's uh, kind of over East Texas, uh, Arkansas, the Mid-South area, and uh, that could help to continue the pattern of uh, some uh, scattered showers and maybe somewhat numerous. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. A reminder, James is still on vacation and will be until next Monday, so we're on a one-a-day schedule. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.